arithmetically. This is a holy grail for uh, 16th century mathematicians, and there are a number of names associated to them. Tartaglia, Cardano, Del Ferro, and there's a few, probably a few others. So these were Italian mathematicians, and they were tackling the following question. You've got some cubic equation, x cubed plus ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero, an analog of the general quadratic equation, and what you want to do is you want to find a formula for the zeros in terms of a, b's, and c's, and in terms of square roots and cubed roots. So you want a formula just like the formula for ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero, where x equals minus b plus or minus square root, b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And that formula for the quadratic equation, which essentially goes back to Brahmagupta, is the inspiration. Okay, so they wanted to find a similar kind of formula for this cubic. They've divided the, by the coefficient of x cubed here, so that's, that's one to make it a little bit simpler. So we want a formula like this involving what? Well, involving square roots and cubed roots. And this is a favorite topic in the history of mathematics because these uh, various people involved here were rather colorful characters and it was an interesting period of time and there's a rather sordid story in terms of claiming credit for the discovery of this. Okay. Probably the, the credit should mostly go to Tartaglia who was called the stutterer because when he was a young lad uh, the city that he was living in, in in Italy was subject to a siege by the, the French forces and some French soldier came in and, and cut his face with a saber. So he had, uh, his jaw was cut, his face was, had a big scar and he, was, he wasn't able to talk quite properly. Um, and okay, so that was his name and he was a, a very brilliant fellow I think. Uh, but he discovered this formula first and Cardano and others had been working furiously on it. Everyone wanted to find this. And Tartaglia found it and they would challenge each other to, to contests like you would make up a cubic and ask the other person to see if you can solve this cubic. And if they didn't know how to do it, they wouldn't typically be able to find it because if the numbers are big enough, um, it's hard to find using trial and error. So it was clear that Tartaglia knew it and Cardano pleaded with him to tell him and said he promised that he wouldn't reveal it to anyone else. He just wanted to know. So Tartaglia reluctantly told Cardano and then Cardano promptly wrote a book in which he divulged the secret and claimed it more or less as his own, at which Tartaglia was very annoyed, of course, and there was a long-standing uh, battle for priority. Okay. So what is this, this method? So let's, let's have a look at the method. So what we do is we start with this equation here, and first we, we make a substitution we let x, we replace x with y minus a over 3. This is the analog of completing the square in some sense. Uh, what it does is it gets rid of the uh, x square term. Okay, if you replace x with y minus a3, you get a new cubic. And if you write it all out, you'll see that there's no more quadratic term. So you get a new cubic, which has the form cubic now in y, which has the form y cubed equals, and we'll write it py plus q. And p and q depend on an obvious way on a, b, and c. And so we can just now concentrate our efforts on solving this. And once we've solved this by the substitution, we can solve that. Okay, so what is the trick? Well, the trick is to let y be equal to sum u plus v. You introduce two sort of dummy variables, u and v, and you suppose that y is equal to u plus v. Then the left-hand side of this equation, once you cube it, 
it will be u cubed plus v cubed plus 3 uv times u plus v from the binomial theorem. It's four terms with coefficients 1, 3, 3, 1. You can group them in this fashion. And since u plus v is y, we can write this as u cubed plus v cubed plus 3 uvy. So that's what y cubed is. And we want to arrange that this right hand side be p times y plus q. So we want to arrange that p is equal to 3 uv and that q equals u cubed plus v cubed. So we know p and q. We're trying to find u and v that satisfy that. Well, that's not too hard now because we can replace one of these with the other one, substitute one into the other. So we can get u cubed plus p over 3u all cubed. So I'm replacing v with p over 3u. And all of that cubed is equal to q. Now that is a quadratic equation in u cubed. If you just think of u cubed for a second, it's like this variable plus one over that variable cubed. Okay, it's like that variable plus something over that variable is something else. That's a quadratic equation in u cubed. A quadratic equation in u cubed. Well, we know how to solve quadratic equations. So we can write out what that <coughs> quadratic equation gives us for u cubed. So maybe I'll write it uh, sort of like a, you know, z plus p cubed over 27 z equals q. That's the kind of quadratic equation where z is uh, u cubed. Okay, and what do we get when we do that? Well, we get uh, u cubed equals, you okay, have to do a bit of arithmetic here now, but basically the quadratic formula gives us q over 2 plus square root of q over 2 squared minus p over 3 cubed. Now that was u cubed, but the same argument applies to v cubed. So v cubed should also have that same form. So also v cubed should equal q over 2 plus or minus square root of q over 2 squared minus p over 3 cubed. That's v cubed, sorry, v cubed. We still want to guarantee, however, that u cubed plus v cubed equals q. So when we add these two together, we should get q. And that means that one of these should be a plus sign and the other one should be a minus sign. And it doesn't really matter which one we call plus and which one minus. So since u cubed plus v cubed should equal q, we get that uh, u cubed actually should be q over 2 plus, say, q over 2 squared minus p over 3 cubed. And v cubed equals q over 2 minus square root of q over 2 squared minus p over 3 cubed. And so finally, to get y, we need to add u plus v. And so we should take the cubed roots of these expressions. Since we're, that's another thing we're allowed to do, right? We're, we said we're going to allow cubed roots and square roots. So we get cubed root of, say, u, which is q over 2, plus square root of q 
all over 2 squared minus p over 3 cubed. So there's a cubed root of something plus a square root plus another cubed root of the same kind of thing but with a minus sign instead. q over 2 minus the square root of q over 2 squared minus p over 3 cubed. Now in, in previous courses, students were made to, to memorize this and, and to, to apply, apply it in a few examples. Um, I think the reality is, if one is honest, that this formula is a lot less important than Cardano and Tartaglia thought it might be. This did not end up being a holy grail to algebra. In fact, it was a little bit of a dead end. Uh, you can certainly with some more trickery, you can do the same for same kind of thing for a, quad, um, a quartic equation of degree four, and that's even a little bit more complicated. But it turns out that that's as far as you can go. That there's no corresponding thing for a quintic equation, but not for higher degrees. This was only realized later. So that's one way in which this is a limiting uh, thing. I'm a working mathematician. I've been you know, making computations for, for decades and decades. I probably use this formula you know, a couple of times. And invariably, whenever I use it, I'm a little bit disappointed with what you get. It's complicated. It just ends up being not that useful. And there's a, a little bit of a complication that Sometimes what's inside here can be negative. Right? We're taking the square root of something. So sometimes you need to, to go to complex numbers even when you know that your cubic has a zero because all cubics have zeros. So that's, this is a kind of an embarrassing thing that Cardano and, and realized that, that somehow you needed complex numbers to, to make sense of this. And once you've got complex numbers, then you have to worry a little bit about the cubed root because then there are three possible cubed roots. You have to be a little bit more careful choosing this cubed root and this cubed root in the right way. Okay, so it's a little bit uh, complicated. But it's just a formula that's not very used, uh, used very much because it turns out that the quadratic equation is just a thousand times more important than this cubic equation. The quadratic equation is used all the time because it's intimately connected with geometry. But the, cube root, the cubic equation is not really very important. Cubic equations and cubic curves are important, but 